Um, thank you. First and foremost, Philly, thank you for reaching out. This is this is an awesome experience. And um, I just feel the love and connection of everybody here. And um, as much as uh, I, I'm, I'm learning things, right, about a lot of people here, there's, there's a very similar theme that's running through all of it. And um, this kind of goes right into um, the best piece of advice I've ever been given. And um, I could take up all the air in the room talking about this, but um, just to keep me on track, I only have 10 minutes. You know, I'm gonna just use a little bit of um, visual narrating to, to keep me on track. But yeah, the best advice I was ever given is, um, I don't know if you guys can see this, is stop playing it safe. And the funny thing about that piece of advice, when it was given to me about 15 years ago, I didn't think it was a good advice. It, actually, I was kind of offended <laughs> the person who said it to me. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of background um, just about me and what brought me to this person giving me this advice. So um, over 20 years in the, the tech industry, most of it here in corporate America, and as I moved up through the ranks and became a leader and got into Agile and being an Agile coach, um, a large majority of the time when I walked into a room full of leaders, um, I was the only woman and the only person of color. I was the only black person in the room. And the same, you know, walking into a space, meeting other Agile coaches, only woman, and a large percentage of the time, the only person of color. And um, I started to add some humor into this. And um, I started, started calling myself a unicorn so that, you know, I have a little unicorn here, if you can see it. Tina Bellamy, one of my um, our wee sisters, gave this little unicorn to me. You can see it even has a little red bracelet there. But uh, yeah, I, used to, I, I've st I started making a game out of it. And if I walked into a room and there was another black woman, I would take a picture and say, hey, two unicorns, more unicorns, right? And the cool thing about unicorns, right, is that they're unique. You know, if they're in a room, everybody looks at them. You know, everybody wants to know how the unicorn got there. You know, the unicorn has a spotlight on them. They listen to, you know, a unicorn comes into the room. You're going to listen to everything that the unicorn says. But there's also a downside to being the unicorn. You're the unique person in the room, right? Everybody wants to hear what you have to say. Everybody's wondering why you were there and there's a spotlight on you. And so there is this kind of burden that you bear as a unicorn. And so that kind of, you know, you, you tend to not want to be in the spotlight. You tend to want to conform to the majority that's in the room. And for a lot of times for me, that's men and that's white men. And so I kind of became somewhat of a corporate, you know, chameleon adjusting who I was for whatever's in the room. And so that brings me to 15 years ago in my first kind of leadership position. Um, I'd worked really hard to, to get there, hadn't offended anyone. I heard Antoinette talk about, I wasn't too angry and I wasn't too aggressive. And I finally got my place at the table and um, I was put in new leadership training, you know, a six month cohort. There were 25 people in this cohort only three women <laughs> and I was the only black person and I was paired with another wonderful woman and through that leadership course we became fast friends and colleagues and we developed a really good um, friendship and relationship that went beyond um, the training and we'd do lunches and go have drinks and socialize and we became allies for each other and, um, you know, we were allies as, as women and we could talk about all the things we were going through, being these women leaders in tech at this organization. And then I could talk to her about the intersect of being, being a black, you know, woman. And we continued this relationship year over year as we went up through the ranks. But as every year went by, I became more disillusioned. I became more stressed. It's what Antoinette talks about. I kept my anger in. I, you know, 
things that were happening, anything, you know, misogyny and the, the microaggressions and the things I was experiencing. I was so busy keeping myself above the fray to just keep going. I wasn't realizing how sick and angry and stressful it was making me. And I was out for drinks with, with my partner in crime, my colleague, yet again, talking about how hard it was to be in the situation I was in. And she said to me, Jackie, you need to stop playing it safe. And I was like, what do you mean? What do you mean? I'm a pioneer. I'm a woman. I'm a black woman. I'm, I'm breaking barriers. I'm getting to where I need to be. What are you talking about? I'm not playing it safe. And she said to me, bullshit. She said, the Jackie I know when we leave this place, the Jackie I know at the weekends when we go hiking, the Jackie I know who is my, you know, my friend and my ally and I can come to and have conversations about anything, including race and us being women, that's not the Jackie that shows up at work. And I was like, I didn't know what to say because she, she was right. I was not bringing my true self to work. I was projecting all of these things that weren't happening for me, but I wasn't showing up in the space to make those changes. I was looking to people who don't look like me and weren't experiencing the things that I was experiencing to make the change for me. And so that was the best piece of advice I ever got you know, changing in that space and owning that, my career and my life and everything I go through has become much richer and so much more fulfilling because I'm bringing my full self to every situation I'm in, not just my corporate life, right? But at the same time, it's not easy. You know, I'm a recovering, you know, what I call a tortoise. I'm a recovering unicorn who really wants to be a hedgehog. All my Brit compatriots can understand that. And so it's not always easy. So there are kind of four things that I hold myself to when I'm going to that place where I want to go into my cocoon and dim my light and be safe. And so the first one is um, I make it uncomfortable but with accountability, right? So I try, I use my voice to speak up and create aware, awareness of the uncomfortable things and situations that happen. Um, and I do it so that we can challenge the idea of diversity. We can create spaces where everyone is counted. And it's not just about, you know, um, race and gender and disabilities or, you know, the LGBTQ community. It's also about diversity of thought and different socioeconomic backgrounds. And so that's my first one that I, I always try to, you know, call to. My second one is this one. Be honest, right? I have a little elephant here. Let's make sure we're talking about the elephant in the room, right? If we don't talk about the difficult things, the things that are sitting right there, you know, the things that affect women, that affect black professionals in the workplace or even out in the world, you know, if we don't make it part of the conversation, it will be ignored. Okay, so that's my number two. My number three is build awareness. You know, I continue to have those conversations with those empathetic allies who want to learn and want to grow. That's how we're really going to change the world, right? Are those one-on-one -on -one conversations with the people in your friend circle, with your family, with those around you. You know, the way I was before showing up as some version of Jackie was not enabling me to open myself up to have those conversations with those people who truly wanted to learn and be allies with me, right? And then my last one, is be fearlessly authentic. I know Carolyn gave me a, a pouch with this on and it was almost like it was created just for me. 
right? I, I have to show up authentically. I have to stop wearing the mask, right? I have to, because wearing that mask and not showing up as my true se self is threatening real diversity, right? I've got to be the authenticator of the change. I've, I've got to be the person who's breaking down those perceptions. And, you know, we need all of us unicorns. All of us are unicorns in, in some way, right? We're all unicorns and we are important. And if we're not bringing that diversity of thought and who we are, you know, we're never going to change it. And so a couple of questions I ask myself when I'm going back into my tortoise shell of cocoon and I'm playing it safe. A couple of questions I ask myself is, why am I doing the things I'm doing right now? Can you see that one? If, I, know, I love these empowering questions cards and I try to go through them you know, every now and again when I'm stuck. But this one is one that resonates. I really think about that when I find myself playing it safe. And this one right here, you know, what is my instinct telling me to do? All those years when I wasn't really, you know, being my true self, when I was showing up in the mass, my instinct, you know, my stress, my migraines, my gaining weight were all those instincts manifesting in my body, telling me the way I was, you know, carrying myself was not serving me. So yeah, I try, I try to listen um, to my instinct. I try to stick to those kind of four mantras of myself. And yeah, I celebrate being a unicorn. And so I ask you to come on <laughs> the unicorn journey with me.